Okay, welcome back to the channel. So this time we've got this uh, brand new kit from ICM. It's the Model T Ford armored car and it's uh, part of the RNAS um, division uh, used over in Russia. So it was a sort of preemptive uh, wow well, um, uh, deployment to kind of help stem what was kicking off with the Russian Civil War, it seems. And we were trying to back the whites. Um, and it's the armoured car division of the um, RNAS. So there we go, straight into the build. So what you get is pretty much um, a good few parts of the ICM 4T, uh, where you get the radiator and the, the kind of chassis, I suppose. And then the, the superstructure is all new. So first off, you've got to get the extra pins off of the wheel mounts there uh, because you, you're going to put an armoured cover on the wheel. So once you've uh, taken that pin off, the wheel will go on anyway. And um, then that extra bit is, is already catered for in this cover that's going on now. And that's got some holes in it. It doesn't sort of sit there without glue, but it's got holes in it for the raised rivets and you kind of twist it and then it slots in. So that's quite nice. Gives you a nice effect. Uh, it does mean that there's a slightly complicated um, paint job when you get to the wheels, but we'll get to that at the next stage. So um, first off, uh, you need to get the radiator in. You've got a full engine here. Um, you don't really see any of it. I think you see a little bit of like the sump and the lower part um, from the outside on the side profile, uh, but you, you can't open up any of the engine louvers, uh, engine a bonnet or anything like that any of the doors um, we've also got uh, the parts for the underside where we've got an exhaust there and a few other bits and bobs uh, all of that you can see as well if you get low down on the side profile so it's all worth having um, all you really got to do is um, a bit of cleanup which I point out here so there's mold lines running around everything so it's typical stuff you just clean those up soft plastics it's not difficult so you start to get part of the engine block together here and um, it does go together nicely using the old trick with the Tamiya Extra Fin uh, to try and get a liquid bead of plastic and then that uh, it does the filling for you. It tends to, um, you see it now, you get a little bead of plastic that runs out if you push it together, melted plastic, and then when that hardens off you can sand it down. Uh, it's all good detail. Um, it is a pity you can't really open it up. I mean, I suppose you probably could if you made up some doors or something like that, but it's not really part of this project. I mean, it'd be a bit of a strange thing to do to want to open up an armoured car like this. But, you know, the details there if you wanted to. Um, and now we're just moving on now. So we've got the fan belt um, in at the front and we're putting the, the top of the engine on that brings that all together and finishes it off. Um, and then we've got the actual fan blade to go on the end there as well. I didn't worry about cleaning any of this up on the top side because I, I knew you couldn't see any of it. Um, so just try to clean up the lower parts and um, not worry too much about the rest of it. Then we're on to the chassis. So this is when you get the new bit. So that, that front radiator and, and axle there is um, it, part of all the Ford kits that ICM do. And there is a lot of them. And then this rear deck and chassis is, is all new for this kit um, now the join there on the end is a little bit difficult to sort out uh, once you've actually got that joined it um, it's okay it, you do need to square it up with a few things so it's best to really try and um, not glue it too much so just glue it enough to tack it there because you're going to want to slightly adjust it with um, parts that you attach to it after this will bring all that together and make sure it's in the right position so it does look a bit vague here and i suppose it is uh, but this isn't designed to be uh, the sort of initial fixing point you'll see in a minute in the next frame that there's once you get the engine in it brings it all together and um, i just went ahead and did all of that off camera uh, because, was, again, for the same reasons, I was slightly worried about how it was all going to line up and I could see problems coming. Uh, but it wasn't. You know, you just attach the engine block and get the um, everything, all the gubbins underneath and it, it, it 
one piece attaches then another piece attaches and before you know it it's it's pulled it all together so what you're doing here is fixing the engine there with the the water pipe uh, that levels it up as well obviously as long as the water pipe fits when the engine's in to the fan um, the radiator sorry then you know that the radiator is in the right place and then you've got a few other bits on there as well with the rear axle um, means that that's all squared up Then we're on to the uh, superstructure. So we've got we've got the sides, uh, rear deck. We've got some wooden panels there as well for the the actual cargo deck or, or where the machine gun goes. So it's just some wooden boards in the back there. Um, so I've left them off. I don't glue them in for the painting. It makes it a lot easier. So it gives you the sharp lines. You obviously paint them, glue them in at the end. Now we do have a few ejector pin marks here that I've sorted out uh, in prominent places. And all I've done there is, is because they're very shallow, I've just sanded them down with a, a floury skinny stick. You can see I've done one side and I'm just showing you where they were on the other side. And uh, no problem there with some of these narrow sanding sticks. It's uh, really easy to get in there. You just kind of grind a little bit out. And you're helped again by the fact that the plastic is so uh, soft. And we've also got some ejector pin marks as well on the outside of these uh, I don't know what they'd be called. They, they must be for the suspension or something. It's again for it, they fix to the rear axle and um, the chassis. So it's again, it's another fixing point, as you can see there. They go behind the rear axle and then join in, um, just behind that engine block. Uh, but anyway, you can see that there's an ejector pin mark there. So just with a dab of super glue, sanded back, that totally disappears. Then um, it's time to build up parts of the uh, superstructure so we get the foot plate there for the um, for the footwell and um, we've got the pedals added in there as well so that's again that's from the 4T part so that's a pretty straightforward bit and I actually get this in the wrong place uh, so again if you just sort of do everything from a point of view of just tacking it in place and then it's when you start to get these side walls in you'll then be able to make sure that everything's in the right place. Uh, and I just use a bit of Tammy extra fin again just to uh, liven that up and move it. Again with the rear deck as well, uh, sorry, the, the rear panel um, of the superstructure, using the side plate to fix in the, the rear plate, uh, is what I'm trying to explain here. And then you can see that everything sort of lines up then. Uh, it's. It all fits very well, but you've got to be careful with your placement. It's a little bit vague in places. ICM are like that. They're known for that. So what I've done is, is glued the rear parts and left the front bits unglued. So again, I've got a little bit of adjustment and play there as I start to put the front panel in because there's a, there's a, like a, the top of the bonnet, the front of the radiator armor, as you can see here is all one piece. So that then squares up your front end. So if you leave all that loose, you can then um, get it all squared up and true. As you can see, I've got a little bit of maneuvering to do, but it does all come together. Oh, no, it doesn't, sorry. You'll notice they don't tell you to do this, but that um, cap there on top of the radiator needs to come off. So I just nip that away. Uh, it's not gonna sit flush otherwise. So once that's off, it goes down lovely. Uh, now, I couldn't see that in the instructions, so that is one point that they must have missed. It's obviously designed to be taken off. And there you go. Looks just the job. And we're starting to come together now. Uh, so we've got the internals, we've got a steering wheel, um, actually, you've got pretty much everything. You've got a full engine and you've got the, the whole interior to that um, kind of armoured driving cab, but there's no seat. And I can't see how you could actually drive it without a seat. So they have left that off, but uh, the good news is you can't see anything in there anyway. I painted it all up and you cannot see a thing. I've got all the um, windows open, um, so I wouldn't worry too much. Uh, it is worth painting certain bits, like the steering wheel and that, uh, because you, you can see a few little bits through there, but I really wouldn't go to town with it. You see what I mean? You've got everything. You've got the, the gear stick and, and the whole lot, but no chair. Really odd. Uh, 
here are the armoured vision ports as well, so they kind of slide, obviously, slide and shut and open. And um, I left them open. And again, you need that little bit just showing. This is all in the reference photos. It, it, you just do a Google search and you'll see them all come up. It's surprising how much is actually out there. There's about six or seven pictures if you just do a, a search. Some are very clear, some are very um, hazy, but you'll get the gist of it. And now we're starting to build up um, all the governs there for the steering columns, getting all that sorted. As you can see, there's plenty there. Uh, good detail, and you do see a lot of that because it's all quite exposed at the front there. But I'm only really worried about what you can see from a side-on profile, so I'm not worrying too much about the rest of it. And now it's time to get the paint sorted. So I've given the wood um, XF78, which is deck tan, and then I've painted the interior parts of the cab there as well in white. And now I have uh, masked those bits up. And I'm going to spray black onto the steering wheel uh, and the, the rest of it because it looks like it was actually the, the floor was black a glossy black color just trying to remember what I was doing there <laughs> and um, I've started to paint the wheels as well so I've painted the uh, side walls white and that's the first bit and then we need to try and get a, a sharp line there which is a bit tricky and I didn't want to mess about and I wanted to be over the top because I knew you weren't going to see very much. So this is just one of the Citadel washes, Agrax Earthshade. Uh, and it's you only want to use that in a situation where you can actually um, use it very quick and you don't mind having to get it off because it, it will not come off. It's not like any other wash. It being an acrylic wash, it totally bites in. If you were using oil... Uh, you'd have a lot of play with it, but all I wanted to do here was just stain the um, white, really, and give it a dirty look, which is, it's worked very well for that. Uh, so that's, um, that's going ahead here. And um, I've already done it on the internals there as well, and you can see what I sprayed black, so all of the footwell and into the engine bay has all been sprayed black as well. And that was the, the best of the reference that I could see. And I, I've also sprayed, there's a beam in the back there uh, for the foot plate, which um, I've also sprayed up with the wood and then just covered. And uh, it doesn't matter because the other two planks go in either side of it. So again, it's just a way of getting that sharpness as well. And uh, that I was, I was particularly after that. And now just gluing in the... Um, top of the bonnet all going together well as well no need for filler really on any of this it's all fine no problems uh, again trying not to get too much sort of plastic sort of going out of the join with that liquid cement because that can cause uh, its own problems and you have to sand it I quite, wanted quite sharp edges to it uh, much like the the actual machine itself there we go cab is on all glued in and um, looking the part and just sort of tightening up some of the parts there uh, that rear piece it does fit fine it just you know it needs a bit of persuasion there's a bit of difficulty to it it doesn't quite um, slot in like the rest of it but if you hold it there it does pin it in it's absolutely fine and there we go we're starting to that's that's pretty much all of it that's the shape of it now um i've just gone around tidied up the seams and i wanted to change out these handles uh, for copper wire and that was the only real modification i did i've stuffed a load of um, foam into the armored cab there as well to make sure there's no overspray and then i've dropped it but everything's okay uh, now i do knock those handles off constantly <laughs> I've had to remake two or three of them you can see the difference that the kit parts are a little bit heavy but I wish I had filled the holes and re-drilled them because the holes are a little bit um, on the large side but 
I pretty much get there after knocking them out and re-gluing them again. It's, it sorts it out. Now, this was the thing I've been thinking about the whole way through the build. How am I going to get that tight, white-walled um, edge? Uh, so, obviously, spraying the side wall white was the first thing. Then I found my trusty uh, wheel mask there as well. So, I found one that fitted quite well. So, I sprayed the, the internals grey. So, that's the first headache. I've got a nice sharp line between the um, white and the grey. But the next issue... Um, after that is trying to work out how to get the the black actual tire aspect so for that I went over to my trusty um, Cricut cutting machine and measured a circle just to kind of print out this um, Orma mask stuff uh, to get a nice circle just to give you um, the masking on the side edge and then the, the intention is to spray that from an angle and um, just catch the top of the tire and paint it black paint it black and um, <laughs> so uh, this works quite well you've got to um, you've got to really push that masking down because otherwise you get a bit of bleed through uh, it being the type of mask that it is um, and then we're using rubber black here from MRP again because I can be quite tight and I'm not blowing straight at it uh, I'm not sort of going in from end on and spraying at it. I'm spraying at an angle up from where the mask is. So it gives you a sharp edge from the mask. So it's like really, if you were going to spray this, you'd come straight in from the top end and just plaster it in. But then you'd get um, bleed in between the mask and where the white is. So that's what I'm trying to avoid. So just slowly going around on the edge and kind of blowing the paint up over the edge. Uh, so that it catches that bit of the tyre that we want to be black as well as um, spraying the side bit as well and I didn't know, as I was doing this I was thinking no, I don't I think this is all going to be going down I could see sort of gaps appearing where the mask was peeling off again and I, <laughs> I was a little bit concerned but uh, I'm pretty happy with the result um, once you've got the two sides you've got this kind of white in the middle um, and you just do a kind of dry spray so a bit higher pressure just blow it over um, and then that should mean that the pigment's quite dry you wouldn't want it very wet and that's the result I mean that's about as tight as I could get I couldn't do that with a brush and um, it's how it looks in the uh, in the reference pictures so I'm pretty happy with that I'm pretty happy with that I don't think we could do much more once we've got the weathering on it it's going to bring it all together um, but I was quite keen to get that sharp edge. So uh, that's what we've done. I've sprayed up the spare tyre there as well. Which again needed to be um, done in a similar way. Because it's quite a prominent thing on the roof of the uh, cab. And then we've sprayed the whole thing up uh, with Tamiya XF 53 Neutral Grey. Which is what it calls out in the instructions. And that was my initial... Um, I was going to go just with the instruction colour was my initial thought but then when I looked at the actual um, reference pictures it was surprising just how different it was to what the actual colour callouts were uh, in the rear here now you can see uh, it's time to peel off the uh, little bit of masking that I did and you'll see what we're talking about so you've got that wood one bit of uh, wooden beam in there and then the, the other two bits will cover that overspray and then you'll get the nice sharp edge. So we, I was basically masking the two wheel arches, nothing else. Not worried about anything else. And then a bit of a test fit. See how we look with the uh, wooden planking. And it goes in there quite nice. And exactly what we were after, that nice sharp defined edge. Now you obviously got a bit of a gap there in the middle one, but it, once it's all done, it's not a problem rest assured it's all fine so now it's on to the camo so I've already done a little bit here and I thought for a change I'd actually film it uh, so you can see me laying down some of this camouflage uh, using MRP I think yes it's a mix of MRP uh, RAF dark earth and uh, I think it's Soviet 
um, armoured colour. It's something, it's just a couple of browns really, just to make up this kind of greeny brown. And then using that through the Infini, uh, no, not the Infini, the um, Ultra. Who is it? H&S Ultra? Yes, Harder and Steinbeck, Steinbeck Ultra uh, through the 0.2 needle. And just uh, pretty much go for it. Now this wasn't my intention as I started. I was going to be a little bit less sort of blobby and more kind of, I don't know, like more like lines. But uh, this is how it went. This is what <laughs> it seemed um, uh, the airbrush wanted me to do. So I just went with it. So uh, we made these kind of patchy um, camouflage blobs. And it's pretty effective. I'm happy enough with it. I think it... Uh, I think it looks the part is what what was probably intended. Um, there certainly looks more like the reference material than the um, kit instructions sort of call out for. Um, I'm not a fan of this sort of spraying. This isn't really my thing. I like to get into the paint bay and get out again as quick as possible, if I'm honest. But uh, it, when it all goes right, it's not it's not a too much of a problem. Um, and this did work out okay, I must admit, with a kind of actually a high pressure here, uh, weirdly. Um, I seemed to get on a bit better. I was trying the low pressure and I wasn't quite getting... Uh, I wasn't quite getting what I wanted. So once I did it like uh, this with a little bit of a higher pressure, it came out more appropriately. So you always, you know, never be scared to change it up. No idea why the high pressure actually works. It shouldn't, but it does. And um, I was really quite happy with it in the end. Gives it a kind of look anyway, for sure. And uh, that was obviously sped up a little bit. So after uh, all the spraying is done, we're straight into finishing off. So I've actually given it a gloss coat here because of the Tamiya um, flat paint. I, did, I prefer a gloss coat just for handling because I tend to get finger marks and stuff on the, on the matte paint. Um, I've got the decals on there as well, which went down fine. And uh, just added on the lights. Uh, so I've painted the interior of those silver uh, to give a bit of reflection. And um, oh, this has actually had a matte coat, sorry. Um, it's still got a bit of a shine to it, but I don't mind that so much. I don't mind that. The Vickers machine gun has been built here off uh, camera, but that's no problem. It's not a great, uh, it's not a great kit to be honest. It's a bit heavy and um, lacks a little bit of detail, but it's fine. You know, it does a job. Uh, so now it's ready for the wood grain detail. So I'm just using straight burnt sienna here, oil paint, uh, with a wide brush, just dragging it down like that, chucking it on, not worrying about it too much. And then just trying to get some sort of uh, brush strokes in it, which then give you the wood grain look. I thought it was quite effective, to be honest. I then painted with a dark grey, picked out the bolt head, uh, the, the nail heads, bolt heads, whatever they would be. Um, I quite like that. Now this wider brush is where it really comes comes together. It gives you the um, multiple fine brush strokes, and that gives it the look. Uh, then it's time for weathering, so I've used some of the uh, MIG oil brushes here, the dust colour, light dust. Just painted them on, and now with, um, as you can see, like quite heavy. This is actually the, the grey, not the dust. Uh, the dust is a bit lighter. So just paint it on, not worrying too much about how heavy it is. And then with a thinned uh, brush in uh, mineral thinners, as you can see I've already done one side. You just fade it out then and um, kind of pull it up onto the model. And this is over a matte coat. And you see where I've got a bit too thin. It's gone all the way around the bonnet there. No need to worry about that. And fix all that at the end. So it's very heavy with the, uh, the thinners to get it all moving. And it's such high quality oil paints in those oil brushes. Uh, you don't need to worry about anything. It's not heavily pigmented. Well, it's heavily pigmented, but it's not um, gritty. It's very very fine it's very nice um, so I'm just chucking that on the edge here and I know it looks like I'm ruining the model but fear not it's all good at the end 
we're, we're trying to create an effect here so we need a little bit of the oil at the bottom and drag it all onto the running gear and stuff uh, and you need it thick to be able to get it on there and cover and then you kind of just feather it up now, I haven't shown too much of this but it if with a thinned brush you just feather it up you'll get the effect that I'm going for so you just keep doing what I'm doing really until the oil kind of thinner wicks off and once I was happy with that and it was all dried uh, got the wheels on stuck all the stuff in got the gun in the back and now the last thing just to finish off the dusty look is the uh, mid pigments um, can't really get them like this anymore I think they're just the same thing that is rebranded and this is European dust which is the best um, color I've ever used I've got to be honest it really is the best um, it's very impressive and just captures the look you know it's, it's just got that right color and um, this is what we do so we just kind of rub it onto the wheels uh, any excess is going onto the cutting mat and um, I, I take it from there as well and I also uh, pick all that up at the end as well it's important to get it into all the areas so just angling it there behind the wheel going on up to the front of the vehicle and um, then starting to come up the sides again with the same principle that I was using on the oils so uh, that all gets very heavy at the bottom and then you just feather it up and um, this only works on a matte coat because you need the the roughness it shouldn't be that rough it should still be smooth but you need the the bite that a matte coat gives it to be able to capture the pigment if you're doing this on a gloss coat it would just kind of rub off wouldn't have the same effect at all the the idea is to get it to bite into the um the paint obviously on a microscopic level a, a matte uh, finish is going to be more of a rough texture than a gloss finish hence the point behind all of the um ideas with you know glossing and decals and all that sort of stuff uh so that's starting to come together and then the next bit is just feathering this in a little bit finer so as you can see now I'm actually just trying to uh, blend it out now don't be scared to use your finger as well direct on it and rub it around with your finger to blend it out you see the difference between the two sides and then I've got to chuck it into the um, back of the wheel as well again the references show this it's really caked on on the inside of the wheel which it would be. It wasn't really muddy. Don't think about the Western Front. This is more um, the open plains of uh, Russia. Uh, so it, it's more of a dusty, dry dirt. It's not um, caked on mud. It's just a dry filth, really. Once you've got it all plastered in there, a blast with the airbrush. Obviously, no, nothing in it, just air. Blows out all the loose dust, and you can see that the pigments are then taken hold into the matte finish okay so here we are um, completed uh, lovely little kit hopefully that will come across in the build video uh, that's my intention it's meant to be uh, pretty much a, a, you know a quick rundown no messing about didn't want to get too stuck into any of it um, wonderful little release uh, amazing subject I mean um, for World War One fans this must be an absolute um, a dream you know it's a lovely kit um, using the old Ford chassis that um, ICM have got nailed absolutely got nailed on um, and then they've just gone and built an armoured car off the top of that as well um, obscure little thing I didn't realize this was actually used down in the it was actually used on the Russian at the Eastern Front um, but it was with the British service it was one of those where we weren't technically there um, so uh, I, I'm very confused with it because I looked all this up a while ago and I've not done the research but from memory this was serving with the um, the Royal Navy the RNAS is that the Royal Naval Air Service sorry about that it is it well it's serving with the RNAS um, and we were there as a sort of preemptive um, kind of strike I guess to be on the side of the whites with the uh, Russian Civil War 
and then when it started going downhill, uh, I think we pulled out. But that was what was down there. A few other armoured cars as well, like the old um, Lanchester, I think it is. A few other different things. Um, and that's the, the colours. So the colour here is the RNAS um, grey, uh, which is, is what the base is. Um, change the camo from the box art, because uh, that doesn't seem right, to be honest. There wasn't very many of these made. I think I got pictures of nearly all of them. And um, none of them really wore the camo like you see on the box art, although it is extremely attractive. So I was going to do it like that. Uh, but after looking at the pictures, it, it does seem to turn up a bit more like this. So uh, not much more to say. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you've enjoyed the reveal. Um, I'll leave you with a few pictures now. And um, thanks for staying tuned. Let me know any comments uh, down below if you've got any views and um, anything you want to say and all there is left to say if you haven't already please consider subscribing to the channel uh, give the video a like if you like what you see i will see you in the next video